There we go. Hey, Pete. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you too, Sean. How are you, mate? Hey, you've grown a beard since I've seen you last. You're looking pretty, pretty grizzly there. Hang on just one second. I had to run outside my house. They're doing a bunch of, they're, they're, they're doing some construction in the house and they're just having to start drilling right as this was going on. So it's pretty noisy. So anyway, thank you for doing this. This is, uh, I think early in the morning uh, in Australia, if I'm not mistaken, I know we have at least one other Australian in the, in the, in the community right now that she's in there, Lark petting her cat. So she's in, she's in the, the great state of Victoria, um, hunkering down, I suppose. I don't know. So I was just, uh, you know, I, I know you've been like, banished from some of the social media so i haven't been able to follow what's been going on with you lately but i you know it sounds like they they've turned you into public enemy number one in some circles and that sort of nonsense but uh how are you what's going on what's the latest i'm really good um my wife nick and i have moved moved house and uh, we're living in the bush at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm growing a beard. I'm, I'm trying that out. I usually do it every year for, for a month or two and just <laughs> just to break the, the pattern, so to speak. But we're, we're doing really well. We've, we're living on 200 acres of rain in rainforest area with um, natural running spring creek water that we get to drink and bathe in. And we're in the presence of a pretty majestical or a sacred mountain as well so uh, mountain medicine is what you could call it has uh, called for us uh, which is interesting because I've always loved to live by the coast love to live by the beach as I as I do love to surf and um, we the impetus behind this was actually we've we wanted to open a health retreat a wellness retreat and we found this spot about 45 minutes 50 minutes drive from the beach from where we were living and it had seven cabins and we fell in love with it and after we started spending more and more time out here getting the place ready and then starting our actual we do cooking retreats and you'll love this keto paleo carnivore cookie retreats we also do wellness retreats and in a couple of weeks we we're actually doing a fasting retreat and my wife just did a yoga retreat out here so it's a multi-use venue seven cabins so really nice and intimate and as I was saying, once we started spending more time out here, we just fell in love with being in this region. So we decided to pack up our horses and all our belongings and our dog, and uh, we moved west, so to speak. It's it's only 50 minute drive to the beach. So after this today, I'm going for a surf. Um, and I get to listen to a podcast on the way there and a podcast on the way back. So we utilize the time, but really it was, not only a business decision, so we could turn one of our dreams into reality, which is setting up a wellness and cooking retreat, but also where my wife and I were heading anyway, because we'd been living on the land, we had 20 acres for the last eight years, was to become more self-sustainable. So this ticked more of the boxes for that than where we were previously living. And one of the prerequisites for us for our next move and what we really wanted to um, have access to was unlimited water, unlimited spring water. And I know that might sound a little selfish, but uh, with the way the world is going, I, I believe we need to go back to what is really, really, really important for any species to survive and especially mammals and, uh, and for humans. And, ever since the pandemic has appeared in, in, in my life, it has given me a, a lot of time to think about what is really important. And my intention is to be in this earth suit and be in this, this, this playground for as long as possible. And you have worked out how to do that through your diet and through your um through the tools and through the um, knowledge that you've gained, especially through um, your exercise as well. And one of the things that really resonated with me is just looking at wildlife and what did, what did they all have as their priority? And it's water, food, shelter, fun, procreation. And it, it can be really, really simple. So this, this move for us has really solidified for me basically a, a sovereign decision of how can I best look after myself and my family 
with the chaos that is going on in the world, because in Australia, as you mentioned before, the systems or the agenda that is playing out is not really something that I see myself being a part of moving forward, whether it be contract tracing, checking in with these QR codes, having a medical intervention um, put into me every three months, six months, or whenever the experts say that it's needed. So how can we create a reality where we can live a parallel um, existence to the mainstream and be fulfilled and basically meet all of our needs at the same time? And in doing so, perhaps even live a more um, beautiful existence, one that is connected deeper into nature, one that offers us the more, more potential to grow and get to know ourselves. And, and I'll, I'll, uh, I spent yesterday in the garden and, and there's something just so beautiful about getting my hands back into the soil and, and planting food for nourishment and we're getting cattle in a couple of months and we're, we're setting up the dam to have aqua, um, have our own native fish and yabbies as well. So basically we won't really need to be relying on too much food from outside sources other than what we can grow or, cat or raise here um, on the farm. So that's what I've been doing, plus interviewing hundreds and hundreds of people over the last year and a half to um, try to find some sense out of this um, circus that we find ourselves in uh, globally. Yeah, I think, I think you're not alone in, in that sort of desire. I mean, I see a lot of people that are, that are, you know, leaving the cities, moving out to the country, buying, you know, a parcel of land, you know, putting some food on there, whether it's, you know, raising crops or, you know, gardens or putting a couple of animals on there. I think there's a lot of people that see that and, uh, you know, they, they don't want to participate in where, we may be heading as a society if possible. I mean, there's, it's, some of it's inescapable. I think, you know, you, I, I don't think you can completely be, you know, detached for very long or very, very many people can do that. I know you mentioned cold. I'm sitting out here. It's, it's, uh, I'm going to put it in your, it's, I think it's about five degrees Celsius. Here. It's like 41 degrees outside. I had, to, I had to run outside because like it's too noisy. So it's a little bit chilly. So I'm getting a little cold, cold therapy right now. When we do this, you know, and I've got my little t-shirt. <laughs> but Anyway, but one of the things that I think I was going to ask you about was, uh, hang on. Okay. See you so again. Thanks. Sorry. I, I, we have a bunch of contractors in the house and one of them is leaving, but um, one of the things I was going to, I was curious about is how sustainable can you be? I mean, uh, I mean, there are people that do that, you know, certainly, and they live in the woods. And, you know, I had a, I had a patient of mine many years ago. I, I remember I replaced her hip at something like 83 years of age. And she actually went to the wilds of Alaska back in the 1960s. Her and her husband, they just decided to live off grid. And they were up uh, near Wiseman, Alaska. You know, it was something, it was like a hundred miles to the nearest civilization there was no people they saw they would see like one person a year i mean that was it and they lived off of you know the the uh caribou that they could kill and and you know a few berries and they built their own facility and they had a kid unfortunately the kid has ended up dying he fell through ice and on an accident and died but she was there for like 17 18 years and said that was the best she had ever felt in her entire life in her entire existence that was the best time you know and she had next to nothing you know we think of all these material things but she had really literally what she could build and what she could hunt yeah, her and her husband could hunt and uh, she was in the best health of her life by the way and i think there's a you know and i don't know if that if you notice i mean i know you've been very in tune with sunlight and surf and nutrition and all the great things that we 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 sort of neglect in modern society but have you noticed uh, maybe even more happiness out there what's it what's it like pete living out in the bush I think we think we're on, you're still on mute, Pete. I think we got you muted still. Let me see. Maybe I have to, I have to, okay, I'll do that again. Try that. See if you can unmute. Thanks, yourself. mate. Sorry. I, I press mute. And then when I pressed unmute, it said that only the host can let me, can, can, can let me okay. speak. It feels like that's, uh, that's happening in society too. It's like, yeah, yeah, no we'll cancel you. Crazy, right? you and, uh, we know, we both know about that. Yeah. But, but um, yeah. So as far as happiness goes, I mean, yeah, it's really interesting. And 
I've been very, 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 very fortunate in my life. Very fortunate and very blessed. And um, I've had a, a, I've had three amazing careers so far. One as a professional chef, one as a, a, a mainstream television host, and one as a as a filmmaker and content creator. And um, and I guess I'm wearing my fourth hat at the moment, which is a um, creating a wellness space and a, and a cooking retreat, which sort of combines all of all of my loves into one package. I, I mean, I love cooking and I love making documentaries and TV series and, and being a host of, of um, cooking and, and other, other um, TV series over the last 20 years. But it's really interesting now at, at the age of 48, I've, I have managed to um, have a lot of different careers. Um, and at the moment, this is the culmination of that. Um, who knows where it goes from here? And I mean, one of my favorite things to do in the world, in the world, is to interview people like yourself, Sean. And um, this week I'm interviewing eight different people for my podcast. And, you know, I, 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 I pay for that privilege. You know, I, I, it is a job, but I think it costs me more to do it than, than what I get in, in return as far as finances go. But I'll continue to do that because when I put myself in the position of the interviewer, um, I'm the student, I'm the student. And for me, it's part of a, a meditation practice. It keeps me very, very present when I'm interviewing people from around the world um, to gain insights into their, their philosophy, their way, their, the way they think. And this, gets, this stems back to when I started to learn how to cook. I put myself in the position of student and I would go to all the cooking schools that were in Sydney and I would watch all the different chefs that, that taught at these different cooking schools. And some were from Sydney, some were from regional parts of New South Wales, some were from interstate. And sometimes we had chefs that would come from overseas. And I did the same thing there. I got to sit and watch and listen and feel the energy from these wonderful chefs. And for me, it was of great benefit because it, it, it taught me so much about different cuisines and cultures, but more importantly, it taught me about people's passion for, for food. And when that transitioned into the health space, same thing, I got to interview mainly doctors and patients that had either healed or cured or helped either themselves or their patients. And to, to be the student in that, and gain all of that information, all of that wisdom, and then also see what were the mechanisms for change for either the doctor to step out of their comfort zone or relearn or retrain themselves with new information, but also for the patient or the individual that had a chronic health issue. And what was it that changed their, their, their way of thinking and this was the question I always asked when I was interviewing people, how do you get people to change? And, and basically it's up to that person to change. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't implement it and you don't change the way that you look at yourself or the world, then you will probably keep suffering disease. So going back to your question, am I happier now or am I happy here? Yes, because like those patients and like those teachers, I've wanted to and I, I've, I've, I wanted to, I, I needed to look at the world through a different lens, through a different perspective. And um, as somebody said in the chat just before I saw that popped up, they wrote less is more. And I'm finding what we've put ourselves into a situation where less is more. And, but at the same time, it, is giving us, <laughs> I was thinking about it yesterday, I go, fuck, we've got a lot of work to do on this land, like a lot of work. And part of me was like overwhelmed by it because we have 200 acres, which is a lot. Uh, but the other part of me was like, I will never get bored out here. There's always something to do. There's always something to, to tend to. And 
to give you a great uh, example of that, t yesterday two things went wrong. We have an ice bath. You're talking about cold therapy, and the ice bath is is on the it, it started to not work properly because um, we've got an electronic ice bath which has been working perfectly for the retreats for the last six months, but it stopped working yesterday. And also the water tanks that we um, store our water in, there's something wrong with one of the pumps there. So it's like okay, still got issues, but what it's forcing me to do because I've never been really a handyman so to speak I never had a father figure in my life that could teach me how to be a man and fix things so at my age of nearly 50 I'm learning now how to fix things build things and I'm so freaking excited about this being a novice, being a beginner, being out of my depths in certain areas, but also then going back to that humbleness of like, you got a lot to learn, Mr. Evans. And wherever you are in the world, there's, there's always an opportunity to grow. And for me, this feels like the next, the next evolution for me outside of the mainstream world, outside of the system and more reliance on self rather than others and i know that's a convoluted answer to your question but I'm, I'm i'm loving this adventure at the moment because it's it's very rewarding it's it's a little scary at times because i do feel like a fish out of water um but i know personally from all of uh looking back through my life when I've been the fish out of water, when I've been a novice, when I feel overwhelmed, that's where the most growth happens for me personally and spiritually. So I'm really, really, really excited about this, this transition that I'm going through at the moment, especially now while the, the, the different narratives are playing out globally and, and, I do believe if we can go back to less is more, but at the same time for us to grow in the ways where we feel like would best benefit us on our spiritual or emotional or physical or whatever growth. And, and I'll say that I'll finish this. Yes. My abs are, are sore from the work that I was doing yesterday. <laughs> You know, when I woke up and my body saw, I'm like, oh, I love this feeling. Like I didn't do it. I didn't go to the gym. I didn't do a workout. I was just working on the land. And, and all of a sudden I've got, <laughs> I've got this pain in my body. I'm like, that feels good. That feels like real work, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, Pete, I was just commenting. I, you know, all, I, and, and I see, you know, when you say less is more, you know, like I said, if you get rid of all the clutter, all the extra, you know, sort of uh, constraints, consumables that we we so so have become so attached to yes you have less than that but you have more time you have more experience and i think you you know you, you're you're showing that you've got this great big land you've got to deal with and learn about that stuff and i i just started this year started something new for me jujitsu and i mean it's completely new i'm out of my element i'm clueless i'm getting my butt kicked all the time you know as a big strong guy I come in my face is all scraped up and it feels good i mean it's like this is really really good stuff so i guess so i get that hey i want to ask you you know, we're seeing, you know, I mean, obviously there's a lot of polarization going on right now in the United States, I'm sure in Australia and other places in the world. And, and I think you're going to have such a dichotomy of how different this is. Do you wonder if that glaring difference and, you know, with you smiling and saying, I'm happier is going to, you know, I'm just wondering where society's going to go. Are we all going to be plugged into the matrix? Are we going to watch? Are we all going to be sitting there with VR glasses plugged into Mark Zuckerberg's meta, metaverse oblivious to everything going around us or are we are some people are going to say hey, wait a minute i want to experience what it means to be a human being and and unplug from that what are your what are your what, what's your prediction over the next five to ten years where's society going hmm. very good that's question. a tough that I've, I've been <laughs> yeah hmm. i think last time we spoke um must have been a year ago or two years ago i, I brought up the the i think i mentioned that i had just been exploring the world of psychedelics because a lot of the people that um, had taken me down the path of um, and taught me a lot about 
using food as a tool of medicine, they were talking about how different plants and different animals could help us on our spiritual and health journey. And that's given me a, um, a really good understanding, not only of myself, but of, of, of the world in which we in, inhabit. And one of the things that uh, some of these psychedelic experiences or journeys teach us is that everything is perfect <laughs> and everything is in balance and nothing really matters, even though it does. <laughs> so we, we get to um, step out of the bullshit, so to speak, our own bullshit and the bullshit that's going on in the world. And it doesn't mean that we, we run away from it or we don't participate in it, but what it does is it gives us a different perspective in which we can, we understand that we are the creators of our, of our reality. And, and this is the perfect example, what I've just been talking about. We had a vision, we had a dream, like everybody, you're, you're learning jujitsu. That only happens because of your intuition and you putting um, steps in place to, to, to make that a reality for you. And we all have this opportunity. We all have this ability. This is what we're here to do is turn our dreams into reality. It's as simple as that. And that happens through our choices that we make, our conscious choices and our subconscious choices. And the more that we can tap into uh, understanding what drives our choices, what drives our beliefs, and that's why psychedelics and other modalities can be very, very powerful. It's why a carnivore or a, um, a ketogenic or a paleo approach seems to um, work so well for people to get on top of their issues because it gives the brain what it needs. It gives it, it heals the gut. So our intuition, our higher self is more in alignment, is more in balance so that those dreams or the realities that we wish to um, um, pursue become a lot easier for us. I'm not saying it, it's a walk in the park, but they don't seem as difficult because we have the energy, we don't have the lethargy, we don't have the pain and the suffering in our bodies so that we can, you know, this might sound a little strange, but we can use more of the time in the day uh, more efficiently because we feel good, you know, and I, that's a general statement and I don't like to make general statements, but from what I have observed over the last 10 years with, with we had 100,000 people do our, our online program and this is what the thing that they were saying like we can do the overwhelming response from people that adopted these dietary principles and made the right choices through that to, to make it a reality for themselves was that they were now able to do the things that they've always dreamed of so that's the magic that's that's we are magical beings and we have the ability to manifest our deepest dreams so what's happening over the next five to 10 years, more of the same. So it comes down to our choices, our, our individual choices, which then turn into our collective choices. Now let's talk about the Mark Zuckerberg metaverse, for instance, that's going to be a reality, whether we like it or not, people are going to find that there will be something for them in that. Um, they will find joy in that because they might not be finding the joy in their day-to-day -day lives. It's why people emotionally eat, you know? They know it's not good for them to eat that packet of chips or the packet of biscuits or that big soda or soft drink while they're watching Desperate Housewives or whatever bullshit TV reality show they decide to watch. They know that eating that is not good for them, but, in one aspect of their life, it, it, it makes them feel good. It might be the comfort. It might be bringing back that, that emotional memory of, of when grandma or mum or dad rewarded them for doing good with a treat. So they, they're giving themselves that treat on a day-to-day -day basis to, to recapture that love and, and feeling, even though it's taking them down a path that 
may not be that great for them. So let's put the virtual reality goggles on. When people are so disillusioned and disconnected from their true magic in themselves to be able to create and manifest their dreams when they don't know how to do that or it seems too 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 crazy but you can put on a headset a virtual re- i've never put a virtual reality goggle on so i don't even know what it feels like or what it is but i can imagine that you are entering another world where you can turn certain dreams into reality even though it's artificial but just like that eating of the chocolate or the, or I shouldn't demonize chocolate here because chocolate's great, but the junk food, it may bring pleasure for that individual. Now I can't judge that individual for them wanting to seek pleasure. So if society decides to go down the world, like, you know what, I don't want to live in nature. I find it all too scary. I don't want to look after myself with the food that I eat. I just want to have a, a superhero experience in the metaverse or whatever it is, so be it. Whereas everything comes down to a choice. So, you know, that doesn't seem like my path that that I wish to pursue putting that on. Uh, I would much prefer to go out for a surf or swim in a creek or tend to the garden or ride the horses or, I mean, the thing that I've, I've fallen in love with over the last year is lighting a fire. <laughs> lighting a fire in the fire pit is something that I have fallen in love with. Like I look forward to that, that one action pretty much more than anything else during the day. It's like my, it's, it's like my knockoff. It's like the, uh, when I was in the, in the restaurant industry, we look forward to our knockoff drink at the end of the night at midnight or one in the morning, we get a, we get a staff knockoff, which would be an alcoholic beverage, you know, oh, finish my shift. I can crack it open, open that beer or pour myself that wine and just sit down and relax. For me now it's lighting a fire and I've gotten really good at lighting a fire over the last year. You know, again, it was something that I had to learn to do because I wasn't taught it, you know, crazy. Hey, the one tool that has helped humanity more than any other tool in the world. And I never learned how to do it as a child or even as a, as a young man. And here's the interesting thing, going back to the psychedelics, I was in Costa Rica two years ago and I spent a week there with Jack Canfield and 40 other people. And we drank a sacred medicine called ayahuasca four nights in a row. And if anybody's ever experienced ayahuasca, one night is generally enough, right? but to back it up four nights in a row, it, 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 they call it doing the work for a reason. But what I gained in that experience, and this might sound really, really strange to anybody that hasn't journeyed in those realms, is every night I would sit by the fire in that medicine experience, and I had a conversation with the fire every fucking night excuse my language but it spoke back to me and what it said was this is powerful medicine for you pete whenever you need me you know what to do learn how to build the fire right you might say i'm crazy but for saying that but in that experience it was very real and very palpable and very, very, um, very um, profound. So pretty much every night now, especially with the wellness retreats, but even with Nick and I and my family, I light a fire, whether it be internal or external. And, and, and the funny thing is now, <laughs> you know, I've actually bought some beautiful organic tobacco and I sit out by the fire with a pipe having a little pipe, having a little smoke of this organic tobacco. And uh, so to ask yourself, am I happy? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm deliriously happy in these moments where I get to, where I get to create a fire and sit in my hammock and, and, and puff on some organic tobacco. And as an ex-smoker, I never thought I'd be smoking again but I, I do it in a very different way these days. And uh, I'm not advocating for people to smoke anything. And you may wish to look at some of the benefits of tobacco and also understand the risks that are involved with smoking. But um, 
at this point in my life, I'm, I'm, I'm exploring that and it may not be forever, but um, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I sit there and, and I'm, I'm having a path and I'm, I'm looking at the mountain and watching the sunset and looking at the fire and I'm the happiest I've ever been, my friend. That's good to hear, Pete. Um, you know, you've always been, I wouldn't say always, but I mean, you, for, for a period of time, you've been kind of controversial. I think that's a fair word to use. Some people, some people, and you've got, and, and you know, and, and I experienced a lot of this too. I mean, there's some people that really appreciate what you do and understand and just benefited, you know, countless thousands, you mentioned thousands and thousands of people. Um, and, you know, even through this new this new episode that that, that uh, the world is going through, there's people that have been on one side or the other. But it seems like you know the the tolerance, you know the the sort of the uh, vitriol has been ramped up tenfold or more. I don't know if you've you, you've noticed that. I mean, or has it just been is, is it just another day to beat out same thing, same as usual? What, what's been your experience with that stuff? So, I mean, I know that's bring a negative in this, but I mean, it's something that I think you have to address it and say, hopefully there's a better way to go forward and not, you know, not attack people for, for whatever belief they may have. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, you and your colleagues and the people that you interview, the, the awakening moment for me to question everything was when I realized how, um, corrupt and deceptive the dietary bodies were, the dietary organizations around the world. And then once you understand how they, why they were developed, who developed them, and then that they're still being promoted, the, the way that they wish society to eat is still being promoted in 2021, just about to go into 2022, with everything that you and others now know, you know, when they say trust the science, it's like, which science are you, <laughs> are you trusting? So for me, eight, nine, 10 years ago, seeing that and knowing that we had been lied to, that my education through the schooling system, we were taught the food pyramid and a version of that is still being taught 40 years later, that it hasn't really progressed yet. You, I, millions of others have reclaimed our health, our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health, just through the simple act of removing one or two or three, four different food groups that they said were necessary, not only necessary, but dangerous if we remove them. And we fell for that. So the same people and the same organizations and the same nonsense is wrapped up in a different bundle this time. Same, same, very, 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 very similar to what we've experienced and what we've researched and what we've studied and then what we've put into practice to go, eh, that doesn't make any sense actually that's a lie that's a lie that's a lie that's a lie that's a fucking lie and you probably went through this stage as a doctor going they're actually killing people that's a big pill to swallow when you look at it from that point of view they're teaching children through their education systems about the food pyramid or healthy eating chart they're actually causing inflammation with the information that they're sharing. And that happens not only in schools and daycares, but hospitals, prison systems, the medical system, when they say, go to your GP and they send you to the dietitian and they promote this nonsense. Not only is it shortening your life, it's killing a lot of people very early and it's injuring them. So when the pandemic appeared, it was, it was very easy to join the dots and see that the same narrative is, is taking place. You know, it's two years down the track nearly and none of these health experts, none of the Fauci's, none of the um, speaking heads from any uh, political group around the world or their um, bureaucratically appointed 
health expert, has spoken about how to be healthy without a medical intervention. Like, you and I know that the information is there. We know how to build a healthy, robust immune system. We know the answers to this. We understand how viruses work. We understand how to look after ourselves. And you mentioned it before, being out in nature, sunlight, cold, nutrient dense food, clean water, exercise, growth, emotional, physical, spiritual growth, you know, putting stress onto our body so that we can become stronger. And when they first said that the only way out of this is through a vaccine, that's when it, yeah, I was just like, okay, this, a very dear friend of ours called Nora Gagaudis, uh, who wrote Primal Body, Primal Body, Primal Body, Primal Mind, which, which is one of the best books I've ever read on dietary principles and philosophy. Um, she traveled in, she traveled through Australia and New Zealand with us about six, seven years ago when we on a, um, a tour. It was called the Paleo Way Tour and we'd get up on stage for three or four hours and I'd do some cooking demonstrations and Nora and other guests would come out to talk about gut health and brain health and, and how to minimise um, sickness through dietary principles and other principles. She said to us back then, she said, be aware that what's coming will be a mass vaccination to create depopulation and to create control of the world. This is seven or eight years ago. I was like, yeah, no, nah, that's, that, that's not going to happen. And then the only way out of this is through a vaccine for every single person in the world. And then when it was Bill Gates that they were interviewing, I was like, okay, here, here it is. Here it is. And then just like once we did the research and we discovered how and why the dietary organizations created the food pyramid, we've had now two years to discover why they have had the agenda to get this vaccine into every single man, woman and child on the face of the planet. And you don't need to dig too deep to understand why and how and where it's going. But I will say this, it, it, it's good to know because you can see it. And, and like yourself and many people on, that are listening or watching this and, and many of our friends and colleagues around the world, <clears throat> just because junk food exists doesn't mean we need to eat it. And this is something that I always say because people would, would protest against McDonald's and junk food and be like, why are you protesting against a business that sells something. No one's throwing Big Macs and shoving them down your throat as you're driving past <laughs> on the highway. And it's everybody's choice whether they put that into their bodies or not. You know, so why are you trying to demonize a business that they're not forcing anybody to have it? They might have some slick marketing and some addictive nature to their food, which makes hits the bliss point. So you want more, but again, it's your choice. If you can't be in control of your actions, of what you eat, you got bigger issues than fucking McDonald's. Same thing here. It's not mandatory for this business, these pharmaceutical businesses to put this into our bodies. It's not mandatory yet. It's still free will. The bliss point has been re replaced with um, coercion that you will lose your job and this, that, and the other. But like every hero's journey that has ever happened, it's an invitation to see how strong and courageous and brave each and every person is and what, what, what they're willing to stand for or die for. This is the hero's journey we're on now. And it's tough. It's challenging. This is, this is, this is 
This is a pivotal moment in human history. Are we magical yeah, I, beings that can, ma can manifest or will we turn in and give our, give our power away to another entity or another industry or organization because we are too scared to stand up, to voice ourselves? And I'll put it this way. I was very vocal when the pandemic started because I, I, my perception is it's a fucking hoax. It's a scam. It's, it's to get, it's, to, and the question that I keep putting out on social media is why did they want to put this in every single person? If you're not asking that question and, and really deeply thinking about that on a daily basis, why do they want to put this into every single man, woman, and child? And I'm not going to tell you the answer, but you have to come to it. Why, why, why? It's, it's an invitation for people to work out what they're here for. What do they stand for? And, and I'll go back to when I started sharing this and, and speaking out, I think I was the only <laughs> high profile person in Australia. Um, in social media and other aspects. I mean, I went on 60 Minutes and was interviewed as well to, to voice my concerns about this. Um, one of the things that I noticed across the board from people while I was still on Facebook and Instagram was I would get messages from people saying, I can't do what you're doing because I'm fearful of what my friends and family will think if I share my truth. How sad is that, that an individual can be fearful of what their friends and family think for them sharing the truth and potentially helping their friends and family, potentially saving their life or risking a shorter life. And that is where a lot of people are at is they have fear around speaking their truth. And this is an invitation for people to speak their truth for ones that fear that other people have greater fears, different fears. This is an invitation for you to confront those fears, whatever they may be. And you don't need to be reckless, but identifying our fears, and I'll go back to some of these ceremonial journeys, the, the whole purpose of sitting with a medicine or going into a modality like that is to confront your fears. You can't hide from them in, in those experiences. That's what the medicine is there to teach you. <laughs> so we're going to show you what you're, you're deeply fearful of. It's just your mind. It's just your perception of the world and how others see you and how you see yourself. You want to grow? Here you go. You can't run, you can't hide. So my perception of what's happened over the last year and a half, two years, is we're on a global human awakening. We're being invited to address and look at our fears. And some will choose to run, some will choose to hide. And that's okay. That's, that's, I, I have no judgment there. But I will say this. If you run or hide from your fears, you will have to confront them at some point. No one gets out of this without doing that. This is the work that we're here to do as human beings. We're to identify our blockages. We're to identify our fears. We're there to work through them and embrace them and grow from them. And it's frightening work, it's challenging work, it's terrifying. And I do believe this is what we're being invited to, to explore at the moment. And it just comes in the form of a, <laughs> of, of a massive medical experiment on humanity. <laughs> and you have to laugh, you have to have a sense of humor about it too, that this is what it's taking us to, to, to reconnect to our higher self, to reconnect to our, our nature, 
to this is an initiation process because we've become weak and we've become soft as a human species. This is what it is. And, and like all initiation, tribal initiations, you may not make it. This is life and death. But if you do get through it, how fucking strong are you going to be? How much wisdom will you be able to carry and share with others that you've got through this? So, yeah, thank you for allowing me to go there. Yeah, I know it's something, like I said, I, I, I followed you on Instagram and I, and I saw you from the beginning saying, hey, there's something, you know, there's something going on here that doesn't make sense. It's not add up, you know, two and two is not equaling four anymore. And uh, I think we all, to some degree, see that. And some people, I mean, I'm, you know, I traditionally have been someone who didn't want anything to do with politics. I didn't care about that stuff. I, you know, I kind of wanted to just kind of do my thing. And of course I was making, you know, kind of, rocking the boat a little bit in nutrition, but, but, you know, it's gotten to a point where, you know, I'm, I'm a military veteran, you know, I care about people. I take care of people. I'm a physician. I, I believe in informed consent. And I was seeing that, that those very basic principles were being completely violated and, and brushed off in, 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 you know, for a, uh, an emergency that some people would argue is not, is not a big of an emergency as they want to make it out to be. And so I found that I have to speak up too. And I've gotten, and I've experienced censorship as well. I've, you know, I've had my Twitter account was suspended. I'm shadow banned all the time. It's just, it's just kind of frustrating. Uh, but it's good. You know, like I said, it's good that some people are willing to speak up. And, you know, I remember, I just, I just kind of think, you know, it kind of reminds me like I look one of these old like Star Trek episodes where they, they land on a planet and there's, you know, kind of the integrated society where they're all in their pods and using all the technology. And then there's the wildlings, you know, there, there's another, there's a tribe of people living off, off the land and, you know, they're considered savages, but when they eventually at the end of the show, they realize that they were very happy people. And I think, you know, maybe, maybe we'll have that in any way. But, hey, I want to just, because we don't have much time left, Pete, but I want to just ask you, because a lot of people are asking, where's Pete's, where's Pete's uh, retreat going to be? Can you describe, like, you know, let's say, I, I know you're still in the process of building, what does it look like, it, you know, your vision for, for what it's going to look like? How many, how many people are there? What are we doing? Where's it at? How long does it last? You know, let's kind of finish on a happy note, I guess. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, we we're about 45 minutes in from the coast between Tweed Heads and Byron Bay. So the beautiful little town called Ukai, um, which is spelled U-K-I. Uh, we're about 10 minutes from there. And is that New South Wales or where? We've been running New South Wales. Yeah. And we've been okay. running this all year. We, we run retreats every week or two and uh, we hold a maximum of six guests. Uh, so it's very intimate. So, uh, my wife and I, we do the cooking, we do the cleaning and the cookie retreats. We sit around a table, four or six of us, and we cook all weekend. We do about 20 recipes and we do it communally. So, and we talk and I basically uh, talk through um, good fats, fermentation, um, broths, carnivore, nose to tail, uh, eating the offal. And my wife makes a really beautiful chocolate and uh, teaches people how to make a, a dairy-free chocolate for themselves. And um, everything's grain-free and dairy-free. And so that's the cooking retreats. Fasting retreats, a lot easier. We do no cooking. We do no dishes. <laughs> so you get to basically just... Um, because we, we actually have no phone reception here either and uh, Wi-Fi is very limited. Um, so we don't have Wi-Fi on at the retreat. So you're basically digital detoxing and we're surrounded by forest. So you're forest bathing 24-7. Um, we have a beautiful creek. So with the wellness retreats, we do yin yoga to drop people into a very uh, parasympathetic state. Uh, we also do breath work, which lifts people up and uh, can give them amazing releases and, and uh, experiences. We also bring in body workers. So we have um, magical, magical friends that um, can help people find and release parts of tension in their body. We have an acupuncturist that comes in and uh, gives people a beautiful, beautiful um, experience. And obviously we've got the campfire. So we've got the fire medicine. We have uh, the creek. So we have the uh, spring water medicine as well, if we can call it that, nourishing food. And 
in each room we have red light therapy and we don't have any televisions <laughs> so we've got a lot of books in there for people to read and blue blocking uh, lights in every room so we've set it up in a way and we've also got a float tank and an ice bath and an infrared sauna and a little trampoline and a pool check a stone buddha statue sort of workout area as well and a chin up bar so it, it's basically uh, and a magnesium pool I know it sounds beautiful, doesn't it? And a smoker. So we smoke a lot of meats and um, vegetables out there as well, because we, we cater for plant-based and vegetarian and vegan and paleo and keto and carnivore. So we, we, we have our doors open for vaccinated and unvaccinated as well. So we're, we're fully inclusive. We love people. We, we love nourishing people with not only the food, but, but the land and, and, the one beautiful thing that we say to everybody that comes to spend time on the land is that um, the land is the medicine and we're just adding the garnish with the different modalities that we are offering but 99.99 percent of the the power of coming to our retreats is not what we offer you it's it's what nature offers you and and what, I've, what I'll finish by this, because I know we've got to jump off and I've got another podcast in three minutes, is that um, we see physical transformations in the space of 48 hours. And over the last year, and, and if I didn't see it with my own eyes, you know, it, it, it is remarkable. 48 hours in nature, eating well, no EMFs whatsoever, like from from phones or anything like that or wi-fi and soaking up the forest and the creek and the mountain energy and doing some ice baths and infrared saunas and sitting around connecting with like-minded people around the campfire sure um, the the change in people's appearance and the clarity in their eyes you know the eyes are always the window to the soul as they say it is it is remarkable there is magic that happens and what we are offering people is the remembrance of who they are and how powerful they are and that they are the medicine and i'd love to finish off by saying to each and everybody that is listening or watching this wherever you are in the world you are the medicine you are the medicine you are the medicine. You have all of the answers within you. There are beautiful guides out there like Sean and others that can offer you their experience and wisdom. But ultimately, for any of this to work, for you to heal and to grow and to evolve, it's down to you and the choices that you make. And um, I'm very honoured and very grateful that, Sean, you've reached out once again to invite me onto your platform. I love your brother and I love everybody that's, that's listening and watching this. Thank you for your time today. And until we meet again, be wise. Yeah, I'll tell you, yeah, thank you. It's good to see you're doing well. It does good for my soul to see. I was worried about what, what, where you went, but it seems that you're doing well and great to see you. And thank you again, Pete. So much good insight. Enjoy your day. Uh, you know, one of the day, if, if I can ever get to Australia, I don't know, it, it may be a while before things settle down. I'd love to come come visit you and see what you're doing. So anyway, thanks, Pete. Appreciate it. Have a good one. I'll have, I'll have a nice thanks, big goodbye awesome. for you, brother. <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> Looking forward to it one day, Pete. Take care, guys. All right. Bye-bye, all. Thanks, love Pete. Bye. Join Rivero.Health for a 30-day free trial to get access to live Q&A with VIP guests, social community meetings, member discounts, low-carb healthcare providers list, forum, workouts, monthly challenges, early access to podcasts, recipes, carnivore diet guide, fasting guide, shred guide, and much more. 